Okay, um, let's get into it right away. Um, the Browns are just not a good football team. They're just not. They're not a good football team whatsoever um, in any facet of the game. They are a good to okay defense. The offense is god-awful. The offense is absolutely terrible. They have not scored 20 points this season. They have not gone over 300 total yards as an offense this season. Um, special teams continues to be hit or miss. Today they were mostly a miss. You had some decent plays by some uh, by some people on special teams. Dustin Hopkins made a 58-yard field goal or 57-yard field goal. Then he comes around next time and he misses an extra point. That would have been consequential because... Instead of having to go for a touchdown down, you know, at the end of the game, you could only kick a field goal. You could tie the game and send, try and send the game over to, uh, to overtime. Um, so instead, you have to go for a touchdown on the last possession. You have two horrible miscues, one by Nick Harris, who snaps the ball, hits Deshaun in the face. He has to go back six yards. And then the fourth and three call, you're in shotgun formation. Deshaun is in the pocket. The pocket absolutely gets obliterated by Christian Wilkins, who had a heck of a game today. He was just terrorizing the Browns' interior line. Um, pocket collapses. Deshaun has to scramble. And look, I know people are going to be blaming Deshaun. I heard people are playing, blaming Deshaun for that for that play. That's not on Deshaun. Should Deshaun Deshaun did one thing wrong, and that was he should have just tossed it up in the end zone and see who comes up with it at that point. Um, but instead, he had a scramble. I understand Jerry Judy was wide open, you know, in the cross. Would have been a touchdown. But, I mean, the interior line just got absolutely decimated. He couldn't really do anything. He had to scramble or else he was going to get sacked. Um, but this team is a bad football team. They're a bad football team. They're 1-3 and three now. They've lost two straight games where they should have easily won. The Giants are not a good football team. The Raiders are not a good football team. Um, the Jacksonville Jaguars, they're not a good football team and they barely won. Um, this team is not good. They're not good. There has to be serious questions regarding the coaching staff. Um, Ken Dorsey is not a good offensive coordinator and we're seeing it right now. We, we, we're seeing why Buffalo ran him out of town through the middle of last season. And now if you see them, they don't have nearly the amount of offensive weapons that the Browns supposedly have, the offensive weapons that the Browns supposedly have. And they're 3-0. and They could be 4-0 and coming up tonight against the Baltimore Ravens. Josh Allen looks like one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Um, James Cook is looking like a top-10 back. You know, and, and their, their, first, their first target, their first wide receiver, wide receiver one, is Khalil Shakir. Not Jerry Judy, not Amari Cooper, Khalil Shakir. And those two are supposedly better than Khalil Shakir. Now, we got to talk about the, the, the main problem of today today's game, in my opinion, was the defense. The defense was absolutely terrible. The Raiders had the worst rushing attack in the NFL this season, and the Browns gave them three times their average. They were averaging 51 yards. They were, they were averaging 51 yards per game rushing the football, at one point, the Raiders had like 130 yards of rushing offense. That is absolutely unacceptable. I saw so many missed tackles at the line of scrimmage by this team. The amount of just wide open passes and wide open receivers that I don't know if it was just schemed by Jim Schwartz to let those guys be open or what, or if, if the Raiders were just scheming guys open. But again, the book is out on the Cleveland Browns defense and how to, how to beat the Browns on defense. You just have to be quick throws, Short throws, intermediate throws, get the ball out of the quarterback's hands, basically neuter the defensive line and the front seven of this team, and you have a shot to win. You have a shot to win. And most likely than not this season, you're going to win. You're going to beat the Cleveland Browns because the Browns on offense are god-awful. Amari Cooper, I don't know what in the hell, what the hell has happened to Amari Cooper. I don't know if he's just checked out of the season. I don't know if he's checked out from being on the Browns. I don't know. But this guy has dropped so many passes this season than probably he has in his entire Browns tenure for the last three years. Um, so interception that's going to be on, on Deshaun Watson's rap sheet and on Deshaun Watson's stats this season, that's not on Deshaun. That was on Amari Cooper. It was a perfectly thrown ball. Hit him right between the two and the shoulder pads. Hit him in the chest. And Amari Cooper dropped another one, okay? 
So Amari Cooper, I don't know what's going on with him. I don't know if he's just mentally checked out. I don't know if he's washed. I don't know what what's going on. After he had a really great game last week against the Giants, where he made some spectacular catches, now he can't catch a football again. I don't know what's going on. The only person I saw on offense, maybe two people that I saw on offense that I'm very excited about and I thought had good games, one was Deshaun Watson. I understand there's going to be Deshaun Watson haters and they're going to say he never does anything right and he's not worth the $230 million that we're paying him for. I understand that. I agree with you. He's not worth $230 million. But if you're going to say that he had a bad game today, you're just flat out wrong. You're just hating. You have to give him credit where it's due. And like I say, on the, you guys know me. I'm fair with my critiques and when I give accomplishments. Deshaun Watson played a decent game today. He was okay. I give him probably a solid B- minus to a B game. He made some absolutely good throws. Again, the problem is the play calling with with Dorsey and Stefanski, whatever they're cooking, it's rancid. It needs to go back and scrapped, and there has to be something new. There needs to be a new batch because this is not it. Um, just so many short to intermediate throws. And, you know, one thing with, with the Sean, again, people are saying, you know, $230 million is not worth it. He's not playing like $230 million quarterback. I agree. He had that one throw to Amari Cooper, that 80-yard touchdown, which was wiped out by a bullshit, bullshit, holding call on Nick Harris, which was textbook blocking, textbook, you know, textbook holding between the pads, not outside the pads. And when it was going to the outside, he let Christian Wilkins go. It was a touchdown. I stand by that thing. But that play, that play lets you know that was Deshaun Watson from Houston. He stepped up. A guy was coming right in his face, speared him. He jumped up in the air, threw it like 20 yards to Amari Cooper. And Amari Cooper had an 80-yard touchdown that was wiped out by a bullshit holding call on Nick Harris. But the problem is that the play calling, for some reason, I don't know what in the world is going on with Ken Dorsey, but we're, we're, we're figuring out in real time in Cleveland that we're, we're finding out why this guy was run out of Buffalo last year. This guy, they brought him in to change the offense to make him, to, to, to conform it around Deshaun Watson's you know skill set. What skill set does Deshaun Watson have that's being, like, what, what is, what's the skill set that this offense is honing in on from Deshaun Watson. What is it? He's having to, we're seeing he's a pretty good escape artist. He can escape the pocket pretty well when it collapses. That's pretty good. Okay, what, are we showcasing Deshaun Watson's arm? No, okay, we're not throwing, we're not throwing any deep balls. We're barely throwing any deep balls, and it's not because the receivers aren't fast, which some people want you to believe from last week. The receivers are not fast. Yes, they are. They're fast, okay? The problem is that this play calling is absolutely abysmal. I don't know how many times I have to watch four-yard checkdowns, three-yard checkdowns, four yards, five-yard checkdowns. I understand that's what they worked at in, in training camp and all this, but something has to change. This, this offense needs to be scrapped. It has to be scrapped, sold for parts, and we have to build a new offense from scratch in week five of the NFL season. Because this is not it. You cannot continue this season with this offense. This, this it can't happen. This is not this is not sustainable. And if you think you're going to have to sustain with this offense, if you think you're going to have to keep playing with this offense throughout this entire season, then what are we doing here? What are we doing here? Defense was absolutely abysmal today. Yes, you had the one touchdown by Rodney McLeod from the strips uh, from the from the fumble. That was good. But outside of that, defense was absolutely terrible today. Miles was probably... Miles and JOK, again, your two best players on defense. Martin Emerson looks absolutely terrible this year. I don't know what's going on. I saw that he's getting evaluated for a concussion. So that's great. But he was getting cooked the last couple of weeks. I don't know what's going on with him. Defensive schemes from Jim Schwartz have not been great. We're just blitzing... 75% of the time, and then what's happening is that def uh, offenses are picking it up. They're just dumping it off to the running back, and a running back's getting 10 yards every freaking time. It's the same plays over and over and over again that are being this defense, and somehow, some way, the defense is just not, you know, Jim Schwartz or whoever is not scheming the, the defense to try and cover the flat, try and cover the shallow crosses, nothing. I don't understand. It's the same stuff over and over and over again, and somehow, some way, the defense just is not able to, to, to pick it up. I don't know. Um, 
but this team is not a good football team. Any any talk about playoffs, it's done. It's done. I'm not talking about playoffs this year. I'm talking about the draft. I'm talking about the draft. There is no way in hell that this team is going to the playoffs. I am I refuse to see this. This team is not a playoff team. This is like a, a six and eleven, seven and ten football team. And that's being generous because I think they can be five and twelve. If they work really hard enough, they can be five and twelve. You got Washington coming up next week. Jaden Daniels, at one point I saw it. He was he completed 46 of 51 passes the last two games. You think this defense, what we saw with Gardner Minshew in the in the rushing attack that that the that the Raiders have, you know, you think they're going to stop Brian Robinson next week? No. You think we're going to stop Jaden McDaniel's ne- Jane Daniels next week? No. We let we let Daniel Jones look like fucking prime Tom Brady with checkdowns everywhere. You think we're go- how, how are we going to stack up next to a great not even a great, a good quarterback. So we got him. We got the Eagles. They just got their asses kicked against Baker Mayfield and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They have a bye week, so they're going to be stewing off of their last couple of games, their offensive performances the last couple of weeks. They get a bye week. We get to face them on the road in Philadelphia, which is fantastic. Then we get two division rivals. We get the Baltimore and Cincinnati. This team is looking right now. I'm looking at a one and seven team. This is like I, you can't tell me that you don't think that they're, they're going to be able to win any of these games. I'm looking at two and five, three and four. If we're lucky, if we're really lucky, it's three and four. I mean, this is not a good football team. We're not a good football team. The Browns are not a good football team. I do not expect anything to come from this season, maybe outside of the fact that. It's Deshaun Watson's last year as the Cleveland Browns starting quarterback because I don't, there, there's just no, I don't see how this can continue next year. I don't. I really don't. I understand there's going to be Kevin Stefanski haters are going to be saying he needs to give up play calling. He needs to give up, you know, the, the being a head coach, he needs to fire Kevin Stefanski. I understand that the two-time coach of the year argument is overplayed. I know people hate hearing it, but it's the truth. If you win an award for being the best employee at your job, you're going to keep saying that to defend yourself. That's on your resume. He is he was considered the best employee at his job two years in a row. I'm sorry. I'm, I know you. I know people who hate Stefanski and who want him to be fired hate hearing that, but it's the truth. And you guys know I was not a Stefanski fan in 22. I wanted him fired. Okay, but at the same time. I watched him go through five different quarterbacks last year and still somehow go to the playoffs. It's not Kevin Stefanski. It's a, it's it's the quarterback that's been, for the most part, terrible. For the most part, not today, but for the most part has been bad. Then you've got Ke- uh, Alex, uh, not Alex Van Pelt, Ken Dorsey, who has just come in and just tried to mix and match stuff that he likes with Deshaun Watson, and it is not working. It's not working. The one common denominator for everything that's been great for the Browns offensively was Kevin Stefanski. He had Jacoby Brissett leading a top 10 offense with Jacoby Brissett. Jacoby Brissett was the quarterback, and they were running a top 10 offense in 2022. Okay? So don't tell me anything about Kevin Stefanski. Is the play calling bad this year? Yes, it is. But for the most part... For his history, Kevin Stefanski has been a hell of a lot better than what people are trying to say that he is, okay? I'm still with Kevin Stefanski. Now, if he does this next year, because he's going to be the coach next year, whether you like it or not, Kevin Stefanski is going to be the coach next year. If this is going on next year with, with either Deshaun, I hope it's not Deshaun Watson being the quarterback next year, or a brand new rookie quarterback with Cam Ward or Quinn Ewers or whoever, then yeah, then you can start talking about what's going on with Stefanski. Do we need to get get rid of Stefanski? That's when I'll accept that argument. But right now, there needs to be changes. There has to be changes. This offense cannot continue. This offense cannot continue. You have not scored 20 points this season so far. You're through four games. You have not gotten 300 total yards yet through four games. You've played... Two of the worst defenses in the league, really three of the worst defenses in the league, and you, can, you still haven't done well. You still haven't done well. What are we doing here? This You cannot continue this. It's literally the definition of insanity. Keep going. 
and doing the same thing and expecting a different result. It's a definition, textbook definition of insanity. If we continue to do that, then we're insane. We're an insane football team. As well as a bad one. But there's so much that has to be done. There's so much that has to get worked on. This team is not a good team. This is a horrible, horrible, horrible team. And I... It's just ridiculous. At some point, something has to give, man. At some point, something has to give. But we also got to point out the fact, too. There's also one person that I have not yet blamed for this loss. Okay? One person I have not yet blamed. Ken Carmen. You guarantee a win on Friday. You guarantee a win. You guarantee a win to the kindergarten class. You guarantee a win that we were going to beat the Raiders. And look what happened. Look what happened. Look what happened. The Browns lost. All because of Ken Carmen guaranteeing a win on Friday. Thank you, Ken Carmen. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. We're kidding. But yeah, thanks, Ken Carmen. Thank you for letting the Browns lose. Appreciate it. Because you guaranteed a win on Friday. Thank you. I we have to we have to have some brevity and some fun here. Because the Browns are not gonna give us any. Browns aren't. Might as well make some for yourself, huh? Alright. That's gonna be it for this rant. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Keep it civil. Keep it within the boundaries of good taste, as Ken Carmen likes to say. Um, hit the like button, subscribe if you like this type of content, if you like this type of misery from Browns fans. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, gets more eyeballs on this channel and on this video. One and three, huh? Who would have thought? What a joke.